If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell icon to get the latest updates. So today uh, we'll see the other uh, remaining uh, uh, concepts in data model, uh, and then uh, uh, we can start with our uh, UI modeling. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, Akshay. Yes. Yes, Ashok. Uh, before starting, yesterday just I was trying to create the data model. Mm -hmm. I'm getting I'm getting one error. That authorization error. Authorization error. Okay. So can we look at all your queries, doubts towards end of the session? Yes, please. Yeah. Then we okay. can so we'll uh, uh, I'll reserve uh, some 30 to uh, 32, uh, 20 minutes towards end of this uh, thing, and we can discuss if you anyone have any open questions or something discussion or any uh, uh, if you are facing any issues or errors uh, while uh, in your, in the system. Yeah, sure, Akshay. Yeah. OK, great. Fine. So let's do a quick recap what we discussed in yesterday's session. So we learned something called a data model. OK, so data model is nothing but it's a it basically this data model represents as of now, assume that it represents one master data, one master data. OK. Like when I say master data, it can be material master, BP, customer, vendor, like this. Okay. Now we will see uh, some more uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, concepts in, under this particular data model. But in general, the data model is which actually represents one master data. And, uh, and also, data model is nothing but collection of entities. Okay. So, entities. So, uh, entity is nothing but again collection of attributes. We will have attribute one, attribute two, attribute three. Okay. So, in a particular data model, you can have more than one entity as well. Okay. More than one entity as well. Okay. So, each entity represents one certain uh, uh, part of your master data. Like if you take example of uh, uh, material, so one entity represents material basic data. Another entity represents sales data, purchasing data, valuation related. So likewise, logically, you group all the attributes under one entity. OK, and when you have more than uh, one entity, you need to uh, make a join or you need to define the relation between those entities. Now, this whole entire set, uh, we actually group under something called data model. OK, so now the data model uh, when you are designing or the data model can be of two types. One is a reuse. Other one is flex. OK, so what does reuse? Basically, uh, in any MDG system, uh, you have once uh, from the staging area, once the record gets uh, approved or activated, then the record will be deleted from the staging area and the record will be created uh, pushed down to the underlying uh, ERP tables. This we call it as a reuse mode. Okay, and the replication. If you have multiple target systems, the data that exist in your uh, uh, ERP tables, from there the replication will it will replicate the data to the respective target systems. So this is a reuse mode. In case of flex mode, what happens is, okay, you have your MDG staging area, okay, and also you have your active area tables, ERP tables. Now Initially, the record will get created. It will be, we call it as a staging record or inactive record, and uh, it will be within uh, your staging area with a flag called zero. Okay. And once uh, this record gets uh, activated, the same record gets stored or updated in your uh, uh, staging area only with an active uh, uh, record indicator. The same inactive record will turn to active. That means this zero will turn to one and the record will be available in your active area only. So your staging area is flexible to store your staging records or inactive records. Post activation, the same record, it will the same staging table will store your active record as well. This we call it as a flex mode. So in case of flex mode, what happens is your active data lies here in your staging table. So obviously the replication always takes place from where your active area resides. Now my active area resides here. So if at all I wanted to uh, distribute this data to the respective target systems and distribute to these target systems. Now, in the same way, how I'm replicating to these target systems, I also need to do an additional configuration, which we call it as a self replication. Self replication so that your data will be available in your underlying your ERP tables as well. So, this is the concept. So, this you take a call at the data model level 
whether you want uh, uh, to design the standard out of box objects are already designed uh, material bp then article master em objects all these master data are uh, developed using reuse mode technique except finance finance data model basically it designed in such a way using the flex mode okay and if you are working on any custom data models as well then we can take a call whether you wanted to design the flex or reuse so what is the pros and cons are probably uh, uh, everything we discussed uh, in yesterday's session Akshay, uh, sorry. Uh, I mean, what is the self-replication means? Uh, both of the hub and uh, active data both are in same same, right? Yeah. So self-replication means uh, you have uh, your active area tables in your uh, uh, same MDG system, right? Uh, like your uh, uh, Mara tables, those tables. So as part of your activation, in case of reuse mode data, automatically it will uh, push to your underlying active area. But in case of flex mode, your stage the data active data resides in staging only. But I wanted to replicate if required this data to my active area tables as well. So this you need to configure an additional replication. How you are replicating the data to these target systems? In the same way, I need to consider this as a another target system and I need to replicate it. So that we call we are replicating the data to the same system, but from one table or staging area to the active area tables. Okay, fine now. Okay, so let's go to MDG IMG. So if you go to data model, okay, so you can see the data model over here. So yesterday we created a data model called uh, Z, ZM. Okay, so this is the data model we created yesterday. And uh, you can define here, this active area defines whether it's a flex or reuse. So you can create your own active, a, re, uh, active area over here in this configuration. And you can assign something called access class. And uh, that uh, active area, you can actually assign it over here, like how you have for uh, uh, material master. So this is an active area, okay? So if nothing is maintained or MDG is mentioned, then we will consider it as a flex mode. Okay, after that, we'll be adding this uh, uh, prefix package for your model because it gen when you activate this data model, system will generate the staging tables in the back end. So, for the staging tables, where it should go in which pack under which package it should get generated. So, that's why I need to provide the package name over here. Now, under this data model, we will have some collection of uh, entities. Okay, so when you are defining an entity. So we need to specify, categorize this particular entity of which type. We call this as a SU type. SU type means storage use type. Or sometimes people will call it as a type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4. Okay. Uh, whether it's a type 1 entity or type 2 entity or type 3 or type 4 entity. Okay. So now <clears throat> type 1 entity is nothing but which represents uniquely your master data or nothing but a parent. Okay, so that's where in our material master you have your Mara table. So that Mara table represents uh, uh, that is a basic table. Initially, the data gets stored, and after that, you have all that other views which has dependency with your Mara table. If at all I have to create a sales organization, first the material should be available in my Mara table. So likewise, the parent and child relation, right? So your parent will always you will represent that parent uh, using this type one entity. Okay, and to change the data of your type one entity, okay, or this master data, it has to be done via change request process. And system will generate a staging tables. So that is a concept. And for type one, you will be assigning the data element. And we have discussed about the key assignment yesterday. And also temporary keys, what is the concept of temporary keys? And uh, similar, how you are maintaining the active area, the data model. If you have any, if you at all wanted to have a separate active area for entity, you can also maintain this one. Okay, so this we discussed. And at the attribute level, once you create your type one entity, you can add the attributes over here and the data elements. If this particular attribute want, you wanted to make it as a mandatory, you can make it here. And the custom field search helps, you can assign anything. And we also discussed about the no existence check. If at all you wanted to bypass that uh, your value table check, that you can actually select this as an existence check. 
okay so likewise yesterday we created uh, one type one entity the child entity we will be representing with the type 4 and as soon as you uh, main create a child entity and when you try to save it it will give you an error message because the child has to be in relationship with one of that entity so this is a child now i need to define a relationship this child with uh, some other entity so that entity is our type 1 entity so that's why even if you look at the description, it says that changeable via other entity type and system will generate a database staging tables for this child entity also. So what are the relations that we maintained here? I created, we discussed about uh, when you have SU type one entity and when you have SU type four entity, okay? So for in SU type one entity, in our case, matter is a key, okay? And when you create a SU type 4 entity, it actually expects a relationship. Okay. Now you need to mention the leading relation. So when you mention the leading relation, this particular material will come and add as a one of the key attribute over here. Okay. And if uh, uh, and also you got that another error message saying that uh, uh, qualifying relationship for that one, you need to create a type 3. This type 3 represents your complete uh, plant master that is T001W, so uh, in case of plants, so it represents your plant master. So all the materials that you are going to extend to a different plants, those plants should be qualified in this particular plant master table. So that's why you make a qualifying relationship. So it has to qualify in your type three. So because of this qualifying relationship, what happens is in the generated staging table, your plant also will get added as a, another key field. So when you have a type four, so a system bare minimum it expects leading and qualifying relationship and uh, type four cannot have its own keys. The keys has to flow always from other entities via leading or qualifying relationships. Okay, and once you generate this data model, then system will generate a staging table for type four and in the generated staging table, you will have two keys. One key because of leading, another key is because of qualifying relationship. So till here we discussed yesterday. Any questions? Okay. If no questions, uh, further uh, we can also uh, I'll I'll give you one more. Uh, uh, we also have another relationship called reference relation. Reference relationship. Okay, so what does the reference relationship basically? Uh, in if you look at this particular type four, I I, I got these key fields material and uh, plant via leading relationship. I also added some non-key fields like uh, ABC indicator and also that uh, X plant status X plant status. So these are the non-key fields. Uh, directly I can add these attributes under my type four. Okay. So if you go to the type four attributes, you can see I added these attributes directly. Now there is, let's say, for example, uh, I have uh, this plant is in which country. Basically, if at all I wanted to know this plant is which country, I also knew I wanted to have a country field as well. Country field as well uh, for this particular plant. Now what happens? Uh, one option is I can direct because it's a non key field directly. I can go to this uh, type four and uh, uh, add a new uh, attribute called uh, country over here. That is one option. Okay. So the other option is I can also similarly how I represented the reference master data here uh, uh, with SU type three. Similarly, I can create another entity SU type three, which represents my country. The key is I think land one or something. Land one is the data element. Let me. For country. Country region land one. T005 is the table where all your countries get stored. Okay. So now I can create one SU type three. And for SU type 3, I'll mention this as a data element, land one. 
So this data element indirect uh, in turn it represents your T005 table, that country master table. Now I can make a reference relationship here. This is a reference relation. Difference relation. So now if you look at this, there are two type threes are there. One type three I made a qualifying relationship. Another type three I made a reference relationship with type four. In both the cases, now in type three qualifying relation, what happened in the generated staging table? This SU type three attribute got added as a key field over here. Now with this, that means when you make a qualifying relationship, the type three field will get added as a key field in your uh, uh, type 4 uh, entity. In the same way, if I make a reference relationship with a type 3, this land 1 will come and add as a non key field. Land 1. So, in the generated staging table, this is my attributes material uh, got created via leading relation, plant got created via qualifying relation. These are the direct attributes uh, that I added under type 4. And there is one more attribute I added via reference relationship. Uh, Akshay, maybe we can uh, define it something like an um, a field should be added from the existing database without uh, uh, setting it to be a key field. We have to go with reference. Uh, that's where uh, there are two options. Either you can directly add at the entity level for type uh, 4. You can, okay. And other option is I'm making it as a via reference relationship. In both the cases, the, in the generated staging table, these attributes will be added as a non-key fields. Now, why I need to go for a reference relationship when I'm able to add directly that field under this type 4? So that it will not be a key field? No, here also ABC indicator and explained status are not the key fields, right? If I directly add also. Maybe I can add it as a the, I mean, data element types from the referring field or the, the F for search help things come directly. Uh, there are, here also, I will be add, adding my data element, right? At attribute level. So there also, I can get all the search helps and everything. See, I'm adding this data elements over here for non key fields. You understand the question, right? Yeah, what is the purpose of you using a reference if you can go with mm -hmm. yeah. the adding it in this? So uh, if you can look at this, that reusability will come into picture. What does that reusability means? Basically, let's say, for example, in any master data, you are referring uh, this country in multiple entities in plant at sales org level at somewhere else or on multiple entities. So if at all I have to add this as a normal attribute, I need to go to every entity, individual entity, and I, wherever this plan, country is required, I need to add it manually at every entity. That is also still fine. But the other way is if I have another SU type 4, okay, and with the same entity, I can again do a reference relationship. So again, this land will get added as a non key field in the another SU type 4 as well. Okay, so you are creating this SU type 3 or this field once by representing by SU type 3 and you are making a reference relationship in whichever entity you need this one. Okay, so what, how it will help us in terms of reusability? Let's say, for example, this, this represents a data element, right? If I'm assigning any value help or search help or something like this here, the same search help will be applicable at, across all these, uh, uh, wherever this field is being referred in my type force. If at all I wanted to change the description of this one, I need to go to this type three and I can change this description. So it automatically reflects in all the uh, entities where this is being referred. If at all I wanted to change the search help, then I need to do it at one place only. Otherwise, what happens if you added it as an individual attribute, then you need to go to every individual uh, entity and that, uh, navigate to that attribute and change that stuff settings. Akshay, we, we can achieve that functionality with the help of uh, custom data element, right? For the land one, we can assign one custom data element where we can do the required changes that will uh, reflect in all the entities, right? Yeah, so, but you need to assign that uh, data element and everything at every entity, right? No, no, no. So, data element in the back data element, we there is a provision to assign such help, right? 
that's what i'm saying so data element level you can change that uh, search help and everything but what happens is uh, if there is a change in the description or something sometimes if you look at uh, what all the other things i can i can do it at the attribute level okay search help you can override okay if you are assigning any custom search help okay and also the description also you can change what are the description that you are providing over here at your type 3 entity level the same description will be applicable all the other places as well so in that case you no need to touch your data element also whatever okay. the description value table that you search help you assigned the data element that is fine but on top of that one if at all i wanted to override some settings then i can do it over here in the type 3 the data element that you created might be using in some other ABAP program somewhere else also, right? Not only in MDG. If you are doing from considering MDG perspective, you that might impact other places as well. But without touching my data element, without doing any changes, I can go to my type three and at the type three level, I can directly, uh, uh, let's say for example, if this is my type three, I can go to my type three level. Here I can assign a search shell. So the original search shell that is available at your data element that will be not impacted if it is being referred in other ABAP programs or somewhere, not in MDG. But with the, with for the, when it comes to MDG, whatever the search shell you are assigning, this will take precedence. So in this case, I am not even touching my data element as well. Okay. So basically, see, it's not a hard and fast tool. You need to use it something like that. It's a good practice that uh, if you follow this one, otherwise also you can add that attribute in all the uh, 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 entities uh, uh, individually also, as you rightly mentioned, uh, we can also uh, create a custom data element and use that one. So all those are alternate options are there, but from MDG side, this is what MDG recommends. That's it, best practice. The, the referring, uh, referring relationship, the benefit is the reusability. Apart from that, yes. is there any benefits? Nothing, nothing. Thing apart from that, nothing. Okay. Okay. So that's why if you see when I act, I didn't get any error message also. Now let's see quickly. What we will do is I'll create one type three here. Z country. Okay. And let me make it as a reference relationship. Sorry. Uh, type three and for country data element is land one. Provide the description country master or something like that country. Okay. So save it. I just created one type three. Now copy this, go to relationships. Create a new relation. Left hand side always it should be the bigger one. So Z country, I'm just giving that relationship name. And uh, here site, make it as a reference relationship and cardinality you can make it one is to n. Okay, and save it. Okay, it got saved. Now what we will do, we'll activate the data model because we did some changes. Now let's activate this data model. The status should be different because we did some changes. Now activate. Okay, so this got activated. So we'll come back to today this warning message business object one. Uh, let's go to the staging. Uh, uh, let's see the staging table for your type four.
okay so this is the one i can see country yeah this is the one you can see this attribute added as a non key field okay so this is how we can actually uh, make a kind of a reusability here if you have some attribute see especially when this particular attribute you think that uh, is being referred in multiple places then only we can actually uh, do this uh, uh, this one otherwise if it is being used only in one place we can just simply skip this okay so is this clear so we discussed about uh, three relationship types one is leading okay so let me draw it again you have your su type 1 which is nothing but parent su type 4 which is a child between and parent you always will have the leading relationship okay and uh, you can also have another su type 3 where you can make a qualifying relationship qualifying relationship and after that because of these two things you get two key fields you can also have another uh, su type 3 and you can make another qualifying relationship also so that will add one more key field okay and uh, yeah, at su type 4 level you can have non key fields as well okay so like uh, attribute 1 attribute 2 some other attributes and similarly if you add another su type 3 and if you make a a uh, reference relationship over here so this su type 3 will get added as an another attribute attribute 3 in the generated staging table so these are the only three relationships we use we will be using leading qualifying and referencing this is between entity types between entities okay so now assume that in this case this is my material basic information and this is the, it is my plant data now i wanted to have a another one storage location which is another su type 4 now always your storage location will be under your plant so this is another level down so between here you have one su type 4 and another su type 4 right so the leading relation here in this case you need to have a leading relation between this this now in if you consider your storage location the parent is your type 4 plant is the type parent uh, parent one it's not necessary always your material for that particular view or for that particular uh, data entity you need to look at what is your uh, the parent it can be another su type 4 or uh, the parent can be uh, su type 1 so the leading relationship always can be between one su type 1 and su type 4 or else it can be between two su type 4 also wherever you see a parent and child relation your leading will come into picture okay so now at this as storage location what happens is because of this leading relation the keys from your parent will come and add as a keys in your storage location so what are the keys at my parent level material is one key and plant is another key yeah so here because of the leading relation i'm getting these two keys because at the parent level these are the keys if i need another uh, 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 let's say for example uh, lgort is a key lgort is a storage location this is another key if i need then i need to create a su another su type 3 here and make a qualifying relationship over here yes, so that yes. you get this another key so likewise you can keep on increasing your uh, uh, you can go uh, multiple levels down but the concept remains same where you are there and from there what is your parent and what additional keys you need 
so always you get this information via leading and qualifying relationships basically okay. leading is uh, uh, referring to which we are generating a child yes yes i mean it may just need not be type 1 okay yeah yeah it's need not to be type 1 okay now we also discussed about the reference relation and here i made a reference relation with my type 4 but assume that i need the country field in my su type 1 also then i can i can also make the reference relation with my su type 1 as well wherever i make a reference relation that we will add as a non key field that's it it can be su type 1 or su type 4 I mean, actually, yeah, let, let us assume uh, wherever we want a key field, we are just referring to, I mean, reference relation or wherever we want a leading relationship, we are just uh, doing that, I mean, mapping kind of. Okay, what does that impact? Like say, if I am first uh, giving a leading to uh, material to plant, okay, first scenario, uh, it will add plant and uh, material as key fields in SU type 4. So um, am I going to use only SU type 4 at the end or uh, am I going to use like this uh, S lock uh, like last one, last SU type 4 at the end? I mean, or uh, I how the flow goes like? OK, the flow, how it, it, it will go like this. Yeah, because First, we we will yeah. be giving the different uh, relationships. Let us assume. Okay, this yeah. is the so this scenario. You see what you do is first you create a material. That means you enter your material number, the basic date of the material. Once the material get created, your that material number got generated. Now when I go to my then once I add this material, then I can go and add my plant data. When I'm yes, adding okay. the plant data, already my material data is already available. So the material key will come over here and also anyway, I will select my plan data as well from the F4. So the other key also came over here. Now without and maintaining the plant, I cannot go and maintain the storage location because storage location comes later. Mm. Now once I create material and I extend the plant inside this particular plant, I can assign multiple storage locations. So at every stage, from material creation, plant addition, S log addition, uh, the staging label, uh, sorry, staging table is going to be the same or it gets altered and deleted from first to second like that? No, no, the, it will have its own staging table. This will have its own staging table and this will have its own staging table. Okay, okay. So the description, uh, your type one, type four descriptions, right? Uh -huh. When you, if you look at the descriptions, it says that for type 1s and type 4 system will generate a staging tables, generated database table. This is for your type 1. This is yes. for your type 4 system will generate the database table. Similarly, for storage location, you will add one another entity type. So that will have its own staging table. So all these uh, tables will not uh, will still hold until it's moved. All the staging areas will be active only. In the sense, holds the data like till yes, 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 yes. Okay. Oh, okay, Aksh. Okay. So, any questions from anyone? Okay. So, in the relationship types, we discussed leading, qualifying, and referencing. There is another uh, relationship is there. Some of this description is not coming here, but this is a foreign key relation. So this foreign key relation is nothing but your qualifying only. I don't know why SAP has provided, but they don't use this relationship at all in any place, in any standard or anywhere. Okay, so they just simply created maybe in future it might helpful, but this is not being used across anywhere. Okay, but foreign key, the concept of the foreign key also, when you are entering your plant, it should go and qualify in your master table, the same concept here as well. But uh, we, that will be handled via your qualifying relationship. So technically, there is no need of having this foreign key relation. So that's why we will only always discuss about these three relationships. Okay, so fine. This is about uh, the relationships. 
and even with the entity types also we discussed about type 1 type 3 type 4 so always you remember about these three types only type 1 type 3 and type 4 i will explain now for type 2 if you are getting that well and good as an fii if you are not getting also don't get confused but don't uh, get confused with your uh, type 1 3 4 versus type 2 okay so now let's look at uh, what is the purpose of type 2 it is exactly the purpose is same as your type 3 only okay so that means this is your mdg system you have your uh, erp uh, layer and this is your mdg layer okay so what happens you have your uh, let's say for example uh, as your type 1 this has its own staging table and you also have your su type 4 it has its own staging table now uh, you uh, for example you have a plan data t001w is a plant uh, master table so that is available over here so how you are representing this t001 plan table via su type 3 because you wanted to qualify this data when uh, using the qualifying relationship so if you look at for type 3 as the definition says system doesn't generate any staging table okay because the table is already activated table is already available whatever the plant that you are extending this material to that particular plant that always via this type 3 it will validate against your master data table reference master data table that is nothing but plant table and if that plant is already available your type 4 creation will be success otherwise you get an error that this is not a valid plant so this is fine so that's that's how your type 3 always refers the underlying active area tables active area means this reference master tables always okay now assume that you have in the same way you have your su type 1 and you also have su type 4 okay so then you have your su type uh, assume that you have su type t the purpose is same it will go and do a qualification into su type 3 what is the difference is if you are creating it as a su type 2 that means system will generate a staging table over here and this particular data will get validated uh, in the with this particular staging table there is no assume that in a particular scenario there is no active area table but i want it's a custom table i wanted to do go ahead and uh, qualify whether this is a valid value or not against my custom table in that case instead of creating that custom table over here and uh, you, option one is you can create that particular custom table and try to do a qualification over here this is what everyone will follow so that you will represent this with an su type 3 similarly how we are doing here but the other option is by definition sap is provided uh, for this particular purpose sap type 2 su type 2 so with this su type 2 what happens is system will create one staging table for you now you need to load all your master data into this su type 2 like uh, your list of countries or your list of the reference master data you need to load into this table just how you are creating entries into your custom table then what happens you can make a qualifying relation with su type 2 and that always will get validated with this data and uh, if the tape record is available your type 4 will be success otherwise it will throw an error it is not a valid value so this is the only difference if you are if if a uh, su type 3 means it always refers the reference master data or the tables from your active area if you are creating type 2 that means system will generate a staging table uh, that uh, you can use it the, though because it is creating in this area that's why we call we are calling it as a staging table but actually it's not a staging table it's a normal any sap table So actually, like you know, will that table, the staging table which you're talking about, will it have mm -hmm. table maintenance generator and all to maintain the entries? Exactly. That is a question now. So the advantage you get, if for example, if you create an uh, uh, the table over here, you need to write some program or anything uh, to load the records into this table, right? Either table maintenance generator or some ABAP program to load the records. You, that means basically there should be a maintenance for this particular table to insert the data or delete the data. 
but if if i'm uh, uh, creating a table in mdg i no need to create the such kind of programs sap out of box provided something called file upload uh, uh, mechanism so using the file upload you can just load the records into this table it's an out of box feature so there is a file uh, uh, sap has provided uh, uh, file upload file upload or download so you can download the data or upload the data into this table without any change request so it is just like a normal uh, table only so uh, you can you you can use this program to load the records and you can download that uh, and all that stuff so that's why sap recommends to go with su type 2 i mean if the table is not there and you need to create a new table so let's go for an su type 2 so that uh, you can make use of this file upload to load the data purpose is same for qualification purpose only su type 3 refers your active represents your active area tables and su type 2 represents your uh, table in the mdg layer i don't call it as a staging tables which which are not available in active area to yes. do the validation mostly or mostly it's a custom tables yeah custom custom tables. is not available it's a custom table so now with this uh, concept if you look at if you read the description for type 2 you'll understand changeable without change request first thing is generated uh, uh, check and text tables that means a table will be created i don't call it as a staging table because we are not storing the data for temporarily the data that you are storing into your uh, su type 2 table is a kind of your active area table similar to that one that is not going to add or delete uh, for every cr it's a kind of one reference master data table only so system will generate a table in mdg layer that is one thing and you you can actually changeable means you can insert the data into the table or you can delete the data into from the table without cr cr is required when you are changing the master data here i am not changing the master data i am just loading or inserting some reference master data into this particular tables okay for type 3 there is no generated tables because it's the table should be already available it assumes that you the table is already available and for type 3 no changeable via mdg because how you create how you change that plant data t001w you will go to your spro configuration it will change it not via mdg processes but you will change it via your ecc specific processes clear so type 3 very rarely i see people will be using so even uh, if the table is not there people will create a custom table in uh, uh, active area or, uh, in normal in a, they'll go to sc11 and create a custom table that is basically an erp layer and they can represent with a su type 3 how they insert the data into the table uh, if they can generate this ta main table maintenance generator or write some ABAP program to load the data into all that stuff that is also still fine SAP just has given this provision. So because of that one, many people will go with the type 3 only. There is no hard and fast rule. You need to always use this as you type 2 in these scenarios. Akshay, for the, for the type 2 to type 4 uh, with the re qualifying relationship, right? Mm. Does that element create as a key field or not key field? It's a key, field, type only. No, key, key field, field only. Key field only. So wherever you are making a qualifying relation, that attribute will get added as that entity will get added as a key field, whether on the left hand side, whether you have a type two or type three. Okay. Okay. So you don't actually get to know if we are only discussing on the standard out of box data models, MM and all those things. So that's why I always go with this custom data model so that we can discuss all this type one, type two, type three, type four, and the relationships the settings properties your active area key key information and all those things okay so that is about uh, entities and relationships any questions so just a quick question like whoever already i assume that a few of you are already working on mdg projects right so do you think that you have learned anything, anything, something new, uh, or all these concepts you are already aware of? Oh, 
so theoretically we are aware of akshay because i am working in for example i am working in mdg support project so mm. you are not part of you know all the data model creation and all it's just mm. about it theoretically so this is helping us uh, you know, to understand it in detail great okay fine so now let's go to uh, the other stuff in uh, data model so till now what we learned is when i create a entity and the attributes and relationships and when you activate your data model system will generate uh, something called the staging tables along with the staging tables it also generates something called structures your se 11 normal structures okay so where do you see those structures select uh, let's go here there is something called generate data model specific structures okay so if you open this data model specific structures you will see all your data models will get automatically added similarly our z1 also zm also now if you go to structures okay you see this we haven't added so the, you can see here all your entities the structures where it will be utilized and the prefix of that particular structure this is the prefix we have provided uh, uh, at the data model level okay and uh, this is the name naming convention that it followed so here how to find my structure name okay we'll i'll come back okay so so there there is for every entity system also generated some structures okay now what is this particular uh, structures where it will be used okay so what happens is this is assume that this is your mdg ui application i showed you that material master ui right so assume that this is an mdg ui application where you have some attributes and everything corresponding to your data model in the back end you have your data model that is nothing but your staging tables okay so these are your staging tables and also at the uh, in the erp side you have your active area tables these are nothing but your active area tables mara marsi these things so usually what happens when you enter some data in mdg ui and once you submit the data will go and sit into this particular staging table and once the final approver approves the data will be moved from your uh, staging area to active area and now the record is in active area and again if someone wants to do that edit then what happens the record is already available in active area so for in case of uh, edit or update or change scenario so the uh, the record the data that is there in your active area will be again loaded into your staging tables and from the staging table it will uh, show you on your ui so again if you some user will change something again the same changes will go back to staging and finally it will go back to here so now if you look at this you have these three components the data flow how it happens so basically i enter some data on this ui and when i hit enter or when i submit that or request uh, uh, submit that particular request you need technically for the abap in abap right you need technically to to send this particular data the data will be moved via some structures slash internal tables right using the, it will take the data from your ui the, your structures or internal tables will get updated and from there this data will be passed to your staging area the data gets stored and similarly to push the data over here again you need some structures slash internal tables so that means it's not only the staging tables that you need the structures and internal tables everything is also this mdg framework required okay you have your search application from the search application when you search some materials it has to query your uh, active area and uh, when more results are found the same results will be displayed on your ui so in both the, here also you need some structures or internal tables those structures or internal tables are required for every entity so when you activate your data model along with the structure staging tables for every entity system will generate those structures and tables so those are the ones here you are seeing where used means where these structures will be utilized used by mdg framework okay so if you look at this one there the types are you can see this is the where used means type one that means here this structure will be used when you are generating some pdf forms this is being used when you are replicating the data this is used during your uh, 
the data flow between your uh, staging area and active area between these two things. Okay. So similarly, you have something for replication framework for the search applications. This will be used. And these structures will contain your field properties, whether this attribute has to be uh, 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 made it mandatory or uh, uh, optional. So those kind of uh, the display properties, field control properties will be stored in these structures for every attribute. Similarly, your key information will be stored over here. Okay. So likewise, these structures will be utilized on different uh, at the different uh, instances or with the different purposes. So those structures are required for your MDG framework to behave or to work as expected. So we are not going to create these structures manually by going into SC11 or something. So system already knows that that intelligence is already input in this particular MDG framework that how system generating your staging tables by looking at your entities and relationships. Similarly, system also generates your staging structures as well. All you need to do is once you create your data model and activate that once the staging tables got created correctly, you need to come to this configuration and just look at whether these structures are the prefix is correct or then these structures are generated or not. In uh, uh, older versions, this won't get automatically generated. You need to come to this configuration, click on new entry. You need to select every entity. For every entity, you need to select this one to ten and uh, add your uh, this uh, this. When you add this, automatically prefix and name name of the structure will get automatically added. So it's a manual activity in older versions. But with uh, recent MDG uh, releases, I think from MDG nine onwards. When you activate the data model, it automatically gets generated. So you no need to do a manual thing. But sometimes what happens is I have seen that some cases very rarely, sometimes because of some system issue or something, these structures won't get generated automatically. In that case, you need to come to this and uh, you can also add manually also. There's no issue with that one. Okay, so now, if I look at uh, uh, how to see this particular interpret this structure name. So what you can do is always you can just take this. This, this is not the complete name of the structure. This is a suffix basically. Akshay, okay. Uh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, if you see for Z, S, T, M, S, T, uh, mm. it stopped till four yes. data application. And exactly. if you observe for the type four, mm. it went further with the different types of yeah. various that's true so what happens is for your type 1 and type 4 system by default it creates 1 to 10. even for your type 4 also if you look at it created a, a, a from 1 to 10 with the required ones 2 is missing 2 is not required so and for actually even if you don't have anything for type 3 is also this is also fine so only the required one system will ge generate it automatically it generates Otherwise, if I delete these uh, uh, type three structures also, then that is also fine. It will work. So when it automatically generates, it generates the required ones. For type one, it need all one to ten, so that's why it generated all one to ten. But for type four, it uh, only required very few. So, it, so only the required uh, structures it will get generated. That's it. Does it answer your question? Yes, okay. I mean, uh, you were telling something won't get generated. We have to add no. So I thought yeah, yeah, that, yeah exactly. So they, that time also you can actually add for one to see there is no harm in generating this uh, one to ten for all also. If you are okay. not clear, you can just so that's where actually what you can do is you can refer existing MM data model for any one type one and type four and type three. What things are there? You can generate accordingly as well. That is also fine. Okay. Okay. So fine. Now, whatever you see here, this is not the complete structure name. It is part of the structure name only. So what we you can do is take this name, go to SC11. Okay. So in the data type, put a star prefix. Enter this. Do an F4. If you look for structures, so these are the structures that got generated. Okay, so you can take this one. 
you will see all the attributes from that particular structure uh, table only that uh, it doesn't have that uh, active indicator or inactive indicator time step and all those things the actual attributes uh, will be there part of this one so these are the generated structures you are not you cannot actually edit and uh, change this one okay so these structures will be generated because uh, when we go to our ui model topic right so if something is not generated here in the ui you will start seeing some dumps if everything is already generated at the data model level properly so when you are when we are creating the ui model then there won't be any dumps and the data flow will happen automatically uh, properly basically okay okay so this is one thing where you can check it uh, the structures okay so this mapping we will talk about later not now okay so the same structures you can also see here as well under the same edit data model only go to cm okay if you go to the specific structures here you can also see the structures here as well okay and what else are there uh, here relationships we discussed and uh, reuse active area we discussed okay and uh, package and prefix okay so this package and prefix is applicable when you are actually doing some uh, changes for the standard mm data model okay for custom data model anyway we mentioned if you look at for the custom data model um, zm we already mentioned the package and prefix here but for standard uh, data models mm okay so this package and prefix is not there so that means all the standard content will be uh, saved under a standard uh, package uh, sap package and uh, the prefix but if there are some custom changes when you are going to add a new entity or when you are going to change your uh, uh, custom attribute i mean when you are going to add a custom attribute in the standard entity that time your custom attribute should be stored under a custom package not the standard package you cannot store your custom data uh, attributes into the standard package that's where this particular setting has been provided okay so your mm data model and uh, you can mention your prefix z uh, starting with zry and your package custom package name so that all your custom changes that you are doing all your enhancements uh, to the standard data model get stored under this package and prefix we will see when we discuss about uh, currently we are discussing about how to create a custom data model okay we haven't discussed on the standard data model so when we are discussing about the standard standard uh, data model extension that time again i'll come back to this point okay so that is under the edit data model okay now after this uh, there is another uh, concept called a business object type so we'll discuss so any questions till now are we good clear okay so then if you observe whenever i'm saving it i'm getting a warning message that uh, no business object type is assigned okay so what happens is in mdg uh, we have different uh, uh, processes like uh, let's say for example uh, ui modeling where you will be creating all the ui applications uh, whether it can be single object or uh, file upload or mass processing search applications okay so there are multiple uh, ui applications are there and after that we also have another topic called process modeling where we will be defining that uh, change request process workflows and everything and we also have something called data quality 
where we will be adding all our uh, business specific uh, validations or derivations specific to your master data and we have something called data replication framework the data will be replicated to target systems there is one more uh, uh, called uh, daf data import framework activity and we also have consolidation consolidation and we also have dqm okay these are the different uh, features or different uh, sub uh, modules or components of your mdg these all these things will be applicable for every master data okay so the central one is your data model from the data model only i will be building my ui applications and from the using the data model only i will be de designing all these processes whatever we learned from today okay now this entire data model or one master data uh, i will be referring something called business business object type or in short people will call it as a bot otherwise people will also call this as a object type code that is nothing but otc you might be hearing this terminology bot or otc okay what does that mean the material master if you take material master i will assign one unique number 194 is a number assigned by standard sap for material master so this we call it as a otc or bot okay so now i will assign this to this particular my data model okay so i'll assign this uh, uh, for every master data sap already assigned uh, one unique uh, uh, number it can be number or alpha numeric so we will we will assign that to our data model then everywhere in all these processes instead of referring my data model mm i will always refer 194 whatever i am creating i am creating an ui application for my material master so i'll refer 194 i'll link that my data model via business object type to this ui application in my cr type workflows everywhere i will link uh, this this one my otc so if the if i am configuring my data replication i will say i'll link this 194 which means that it is for material master okay everywhere in your dqm or in your consolidation in your data import framework everywhere we will refer your data model or your master data using this number 194 so whenever you create any data model custom data model for all the standard data models these business object type or otcs are already available we don't change it 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 is consistent across all your these topics for material master wherever you see the business object type or otc is 194 that is assigned by sap we cannot change that one similarly for our custom objects also we need to assign one otc we need to create a otc and then it assign it to that otc so that this otc number or bot number i will refer when i am create when i am developing an ui application i will create my uh, otc or uh, i'll assign that uh, i will link my data model via otc okay so that is the significance so when i am activate when i am saving my data model i got the warning message that no business object type is assigned without this business object type i cannot actually go ahead and create an ui application okay so those business object types we can create over here you can see uh, define business object type codes for the standard it's already available for the custom we need to go to this configuration and add it okay so if you look at this this is for the business partner relationship and these are em object business object types this is for business partner this is for cost center this is for customer similarly for material you see this is for material so likewise sap generated for some of the objects all these things but for the custom objects 
nothing will be available and i cannot reuse any of these ones because those are actually created for a specific uh, object now all i need to do is i need to create my own business object type okay so you can click on new entry it's very simple z you can give any name z or y starting with so i usually give zm our data model underscore otc or bot let's say bot so description is business object for zm model any free text so you just save it okay so now i need to assign this business object to my data model so let's go to the data model okay select your data model go to entity types you will always assign this business object type to your type 1 entity level which is your parent so select your type 1 entity here after attributes you have something called business object type now click on new entry bo type business object type you can choose it because we already created you can select it from zm bot yeah? this is the one okay so it enters so you'll see the description as well select it as a root this is the root entity for this particular object and save it that's it now this time you don't get any warning message because we also assigned a business object type okay now since i am assigning this particular business object type at my type 1 entity level what does that mean means in a data model under a data model you have your data model you can have in any data model you can have multiple type 1 entities okay so far we discussed about one data model one type 1 entity and we discussed about under that one type 4 or multiple type 4s but you can also have multiple type 1 entities under a data model each type one entity represents one unique master. So data model not only represents single master, it can also represent multiple masters. That's why at entity level, I'll assign my BOT. One BOT here, one BOT here, and one BOT here. Okay, now, if you look at MM data model, MM data model has only one SU type one. That means your MM data model always represents material master only, no other object. Whereas BP data model also has one SU type one entity. That SU type one entity represents your business partner and uh, the child's or your customer or vendor. These are type fours. These are your SU type fours. Okay. But at higher level, BP also represents one master. But if you go to finance data model, OG data model, there you can find multiple type ones. One represents cost center, another SU type one represents profit center. So likewise, multiple type ones are there in finance. The data model is one only. So because uh, uh, logically we are grouping all these profit center, cost center, all these are though these are uh, individual master data but all this comes under finance module. So that's why SAP created one single data model. Under the data model, they created multiple type ones. Similarly, if you go to uh, article master, the data model is AR. It always represents only one uh, object that is uh, article. But whereas if you go to EAM, that the data model is U1, so here again it represents multiple masters su type 1 this is for equipment and the, there is again another su type 1 this is for functional location there is again another su type 1 this is for bomb so likewise 
multiple type ones because all these are comes under plant maintenance module. Uh, so that's why they created only one single data model and uh, added all these multiple type ones. So in summary, a data model can represent one or multiple masters. How do I know whether it's one or multiple master? Depends on the number of type one entities that you have. Uh, is that clear? Okay, so that's why always I create a business object type and I'll assign, I don't assign it data model, I'll assign it to the type one entity level, the parent entity level. Okay, fine. So, uh, let's go to our, uh, so this one is done. Why, I think we added it, right? Added it and also saved it. Okay, it's already added it, right? Okay, in the top it is there. Entity types, type one entity, business object type. Yeah, it is there. Okay. So now when you add this business object type and save it, we are not changing the entities or anything. Okay, it's still showing as a different. Okay. So let's activate it again then. Okay, so okay, fine. So this is done now. Okay, what else is there? So we discussed about a business object type code, and after we will come across this uh, again and again uh, uh, in UI model and other topics as well. Okay, so instead of assigning that at that we how we actually assign link that uh, ui model uh, sorry uh, that business object type we went to this edit uh, data model and at the data model level for type one level we added that one there is again uh, other other way also you can directly go to this particular configuration and you can add your business object type uh, that zm underscore bot then your data model and your type one entity here also you can assign but usually we don't touch this configuration we always assign it at the data model and uh, the entity level. Okay, so now the other next one is define prefix for your internal key assignments. So this is yesterday I showed you that in the material master UI, there will be a dollar symbol that gets added. Okay, so that dollar symbol indicates that it is a temporary number that got generated within MDG layer. By default, it shows that uh, uh, prefix as a dollar symbol. Now, for example, if at all you wanted to replace the dollar with something else, other prefix like hash or any special character, that also you can actually use, replace that one, the prefix. 
but usually we don't touch later everyone knows that dollar is indicates it's a temporary number so people will go with that option only for our custom data model hours is an uh, uh, external number range we assigned that no internal key assignment so that means it is not applicable for us but for the, you can look at the for the standard one these are the prefixes that uh, comes with the default out of box uh, for mm and pp okay so next one is authorization relevancy per entity type okay so this is also basically for our knowledge purpose we don't touch anything here but let's look at what is this uh, authorization relevance okay so usually what happens is Okay, so <clears throat> you have your uh, MDG UI application in the back end. Uh, you have your MDG uh, configurations, uh, MDG IMG or MDG layer. Okay, in, uh, in okay, not like this. This is your MDG uh, system. And you, you have your MDG layer, and this is a UI application. Okay, so then what happens? We have uh, we discussed also about uh, something called uh, access class, which acts as a bridge between your uh, MDG and uh, ERP layer. Okay, so uh, you you also have your MM01 or ECC transactions. To create a material using MM01, the user required some authorizations. Okay, so those authorizations are uh, available comes as part of your ERP package. As part of your ERP package, there are some standard authorization objects are there to create a material, to create a material, to extend the material to a plant, to uh, maintain or to extend that uh, material to a sales organization. So likewise to perform uh, activities at material master level or BP level or uh, any master data, there are some standard authorization objects are that are already available, which comes as part of your ERP. OK, security team will be setting up these authorizations and they'll be, they'll be assigning these roles to the business users. OK, now when I'm creating my material master material using MDG layer, what happens is via this access class system also looks at these authorizations. Yesterday, when I showed you that author access class, there is a method I showed you that check underscore authority. At the access class level, you will have that method check underscore authority. So that authorization, that method access class is responsible for validating whether the user has the correct authorizations, ERP authorizations or not. SAP MDG doesn't come up with all set of all uh, 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 together a new different authorizations. They are still again reusing your uh, uh, ERP authorizations only, whether you have that uh, authorizations or not. If you don't have authorization to extend that material to a plant, in MDG also you won't be having that authorization. Okay, so this is the default behavior. Okay, so now in this configuration, if you look at uh, uh, authorization relevance per entity, By default, it has that uh, 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 configuration saying that you always go and look at your uh, ERP authorizations. Okay, so let's take uh, MM data model. Okay, if I go to that reuse active area, so uh, this is your reuse active area for material master. Okay, so here MDG specific is unticked at uh, overall data model level or at entity level, okay, everything is uh, unticked. That means it will reuse the e underlying ERP standard behavior. But assume that I don't want it to use that ERP authorizations 
I wanted to have my own authorizations in MDG. That means you are you wanted to skip this complete authorization. Let's handle all your authorizations within MDG only. In that case, what you need to do is you need to select this MDG underscore specific. When you select this one, your check authority method won't get executed at, author, at your access class level. Instead of that one, it will look for MDG specific authorizations. So you now it's your responsibility or the security team responsibility uh, uh, as a team that uh, what authorizations you need to handle. So it's a kind of rework for you. Usually no one will do this change. No one will touch this configuration. Everyone has to go and use the standard ERP authorizations. You cannot have uh, MDG specific where SAP already provided the standard uh, ERP authorizations. SAP has provided this flexibility considering your custom objects, not the standard objects. If you are touching your standard objects is authorization, it will become a very big mess. OK, so but if you have your custom object and for the custom object, either you have option to create your authorizations in ERP and uh, start uh, using it or else SAP MDG also provided by default. There is an authorization object called U USMD USMD underscore MDAT MDAT is the authorization. So this is the authorization that SAP has provided as part of MDG. In this authorization, what attributes you will be having is data model. I'll show you this data model, then entity, then uh, 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 then uh, data model entity. Yeah, only I think uh, CR type, CR type. Okay, so there are a couple of more parameters are there. So what does that mean? Basically, in the data model, if you say yes or create or uh, entity you have create or change or display, these are the activities. So, so when you have these ones, it will always look if your user ID is having authorization to look at this data model or if your user ID is having authorization to uh, create a new entity. New entity means in the UI. I, whether you have authorization to create a new plant or new sales or so all those things and for every entity you need to maintain these authorizations. OK, so or else if you are extending a custom in the, in the standard data model itself, if you are adding a new entity custom entity for the custom entity anyway, standard doesn't have the authorization. In that case, SAP provides the default authorization that where you can use uh, this USMD underscore M data. So you can, if you give it uh, this authorization object to basis, USMD underscore M data, if you give this authorization to basis, they can actually maintain the relevant uh, uh, stuff like there will be activity and data model. Okay, so under this, but you also will be having entity, entity as well. So you can control entity level authorizations. Maybe I wanted to give that authorization to maintain only one type one. I don't want it to. Uh, I wanted to give the authorization for type four for different user groups. So likewise, basis so sorry, security will control this based on these parameters or based on your needs. They will create multiple roles and uh, uh, which user wants to maintain which data, and those those are roles will be assigned to the user. But we don't actually touch anything over here. This is for your knowledge purpose. I hardly use it till now. Uh, I never uh, I don't see any need of using this particular uh, one. But conceptual conceptual wise, you have these uh, 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 authorizations. MDG also comes up with some default authorizations. If nothing is available in the standard, you can make use of these authorization object. Uh, Okay. Any like question? Basically, there is nothing specific to be done for authorization, right? Yes, yes, yes. Yep. So, see, the only scenario is you extended your MM data model with some custom entity. For all the standard entities, your plant, sales, or and everything, you already have your ECC specific authorization objects. Those authorization objects are usually. It will be like uh, M, M underscore mat underscore mat underscore, uh, for example, plant uh, M underscore mat underscore 
mat underscore mvke so likewise there are different operation objects are already available for standard even for customer or vendor and all those things but when you add a custom entity so those operation objects will be applicable for your mm standard entities as well but when you add a custom entity for the custom entity if there is a need business says that uh, this uh, custom entity data has to be maintained by only certain user group then in that case what you do is you you, may, you can make use of this one you say your data model is mm so okay mm your entity is z cust is the customer custom entity okay cr types you can mention and the activity is there so activity is uh, you can say here create or change or display okay assume that these are these are the activities and this setting you will maintain in a profile user profile role and that role you will assign it to a user so that user can along with the standard authorizations that user can also maintain the because this entity we are providing a specific authorization so a, a user can create that uh, entity in the sense on the ui application you can add that uh, data maintain the data now for other user there are some other user groups are there so you capture under this particular role one you also create another role role two everything same but here you say only display and this role you will assign to all the remaining users then what happens this user can see the data on the ui but he cannot change that edit button for this particular section won't be uh, uh, displayed in that case this will be useful only for your custom entities clear Yeah, Akshay. Okay. Akshay, I have one, one more question. Uh, sure. See, uh, the access cost is the base for uh, performing the validation checks, right? Mm, yes. It is good for that BP and MM data model. What about that uh, data model? How can we achieve this functionality? For which data model? Finance, OG. For finance, SAP also provided under the data quality, SAP also provided certain baddies. So all the validations for finance objects are performed under that particular baddie only. Since there is no okay. access class available for finance object, so SAP make use of for this particular uh, uh, derivation baddie is there. We will discuss that derivation baddie under here. If you look at these topics, right? We will be discussing our derivation baddie under this data quality topic. So okay, the, during the time I'll show you. But to answer your question, yes, validations are there for finance also, but those validations are performed in the derivation baddie, uh, not because there is no access class. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So fine. After we discussed about uh, authorizations. This, this is the place where you can see the generated uh, structures or if at all you wanted to uh, uh, generate uh, again, you can actually go to this configuration and do it, okay? And these mappings, this we call it as an SMT mapping configuration, SMT service mapping tool configuration. This we will discuss when we are discussing about that uh, standard data model extensions. That is nothing but when when we are adding a custom entity or custom attribute in MM data model or PP data model, during that time, this configuration will be helpful. So we will come back to this configuration when we are talking about the standard data model extensions. For the custom data model, this is not required. Okay, so this is all about uh, the data model uh, uh, topic. So we created one data model, type one, type four, type threes, we created the staging tables got generated. So our staging area is ready for us. Now the next topic is we need to create an UI application so that, that you are using that UI application, I can enter the data and the data will get inserted into my staging tables.
so before going to ui modeling any questions uh, you wanted me to repeat any specific topic if you are not clear under the data model No. Okay, fine. So if no further questions, let's get into UI model topic. Okay, so <clears throat> okay. So now in the data model, it shows uh, this is a I mean uh, overview of your MM data model. So in MM data model, you have multiple entities. There are many, but logically at very high level, these are the different uh, views that user can maintain for the material basic data, sales, valuation, storage, location, warehouse, plant data. So uh, this is a overview of your MM data, MM data model, where the multiple views user can maintain using MM data model in MDG. Okay. So this is an example how your relationship works. You have your type one entity here. And uh, here, this is your type one. This is your type four. Okay. And uh, between type one and type four, there is a leading relation. And uh, uh, here you have your SU type two. From SU type two to type, same type four, you have a reference relation. Again, this is your uh, SU type three plan. You are having a qualifying relationship over here. It's a one uh, uh, example how your relationship works. Okay, so now this is the BP data model overview. So in, uh, we'll go through it later. Now in the BP data model also, this is your type one. And after that, uh, I think the other one has a better view. Yeah, this one, okay. So you have your BP header, which is a type one. Under type one, these many type fours are there under BP data model. You can see out of which there is one entity is there type four, which we call it as a multi assignment. And from this multi assignment, there are two chains are there. One is custodian that is customer and vengeance is vendor. So this is one type four. This is also again another type four. This is another type four. Under this type four, again, you have some more type four chains. Again, this type four has some more chains. So it's a logically grouped uh, uh, the information under between customer and vendor. And at the top, you have your BP header. Okay, so now I also wanted to show you another uh, view of this data model, how you can interpret. So go to your data model. Go to display. ZM, select your data model. There is something called visualize your data model. Okay, so if you look at this, at the top you have your data model name. This is your type one, one type one, this which is a parent. Under this, when you expand this, these are the direct attributes that we added under type one. And there is a sub child also, child entity. This folder indicates it's an entity. This symbol indicates it's an attribute. Okay, so now here if you look at, uh, in this one, the entity itself will become a key attribute. We discussed about, that's why we, at the type one itself, we maintained the data element. So what your entity, its system will create an, a key attribute with the same entity name. That's why we assigned this data element at the entity level. So you can see this uh, with this one, it indicates that this is the same entity itself. Okay, and uh, this is your storage use type one. Okay, so now <clears throat> when you expand your, under this type one entity, you also have a child type four. So when you expand this child, now you can see here, this particular attribute which is showing got added via leading relation. And this is added by a qualifying re relation. These two are the direct attributes. This country got added by a reference relation. You can see the reference entity over here. So this is how you can actually see a single view, uh, the hierarchical manner, your data model.
okay so let's also look at uh, the mm data model as well just to compare go to visualize data model okay so here also when you expand everything these are multiple type fours are there but uh, i'll explain why these am um, these type fours are there but for now you ignore this one okay so this we can actually discuss it little later but these are otherwise these are having very less significance okay but the main under mm the main type one is this one material the name of the entity okay so when you expand this entity itself will become your uh, key attribute that's why you can see entity type itself and it is a type one entity okay under this you can see all these are the different attributes under type one entity there are many these are all these are coming from your mara table only there are of course there are some custom attributes are also there okay so there are some custom attributes are also there so till here all the all these are attributes under your material now after this you have some different uh, like uh, uh, mvk sales is there this is the type for child entity here you have see one leading relation to qualifying relationships and these are the direct attributes there are some reference attributes are also there available because rounding profile will be used in multiple entities so they created it as a type four, type 3 and they made it as a reference relation so these attributes got added via reference relationship so it's nothing difference whatever we build now for our gm data model that is how actually mm data model also created the only difference is in our case we have one type 1 one type 4 uh, and some very limited attributes whereas in mm data model it has the complete list of attributes okay now another tip is let's say for example uh, you wanted to know if there, there is an attribute in mara table let me show you mara table business is asking that okay so this uh, date of last change not this one maintenance status is there assume that this attribute now business says that okay i wanted to maintain this attribute via mdg governance process Ideally, mostly 90% all the attributes in your uh, material master should be available in your data model also. Okay, but sometimes what happens is the name might be different in your data model. The attribute name, it might be some different name. So usually if at all you wanted to identify uh, corresponding to this one, what is my attribute name in MDG data model because it has a very huge list. So usually always take this data element because though they create the attribute name uh, uh, the name of this particular attribute might be different name but the md uh, uh, sap always ensures that they use the same data element so take this data element now you can go back to okay here there is a search option right and do a search nothing found huh? Maybe that attribute is not there. Let's take another one, MTART. See, MTRT somewhere it found. Yeah, here you can see it got selected right with this one. So wherever that attribute or uh, uh, that uh, that attribute is there, all if it is available in multiple entities, everywhere it will select this uh, kind of thing. So that's how actually you can find. Uh, whether this attribute is there in MDG scope or not. So, but it's not necessarily that all the attributes that you have in your Mara, Mara material master, right, or business partner, not all the attributes are available in MDG as well. Sometimes some of the less important attributes might be not uh, available in uh, MDG scope. So you might not find that those attributes in your MDG. In that case, what we do? We extend that particular, we at least we will identify that entity, the relevant entity, and there we will 
extend with some custom attribute, Z attribute. And at the time of activation, what we do, this Z attribute value, we will map it to the standard uh, uh, Mara Masi table attribute. So that is what our data model extension part. So there are multiple scenarios in what are the cases I'll extend my MMR, the standard data model. This is one of the scenario. This we will discuss when we talk about that one. But the reason just, um, it's a kind of tip uh, so because in many times, uh, even uh, I always go with this uh, one. Okay, if business is talking about some attribute. I will take that attribute first. I'll locate that in uh, the standard active area tables. There I'll take that uh, field name or uh, uh, the data element and I'll come to this and I'll search over here to identify under which entity this attribute is available. Okay. Fine. So that is about uh, that uh, data model. What else are there under the data model? We are missing something. Yeah. Next is our uh, UI. So let me close this open the other one. Much cleaner one. Okay, so we completed this data model topic. So now we will uh, go to this uh, UI user interface model UI topic. Okay, so basically this UI model topic is uh, uh, to access or to create your master data. There are multiple out of box UI applications are available. Okay, so those are uh, to uh, basically uh, either to create the master data to change the master data or else to search your master data to perform your uh, mass updates file uploads or to load the data for uh, for all these different activities sap already provided uh, 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 out of box ui applications okay so those ui applications are uh, basically two type of ui applications one is uh, the nwb nwbc based WBC based uh, UI applications. We, we call it as a FPM UI applications. FPM UI applications. Okay. The other one is Fury applications. Fury applications. Okay. So, okay. So now these are the two type of UI applications using which we can actually access our MDG. We can. Uh, create or change our uh, master data. Okay, so out of these two things, first now we will go through this FPM applications, which are uh, uh, very uh, basically important and uh, where has a lot of flexibility to enhance and all this. Fury are a kind of uh, uh, things where uh, which will we can perform very limited uh, activities using these Fury applications. We'll go through it a little later when we are talking about uh, uh, DQM and uh, mdc so during all this dqm and mdc are purely built based on the fury thing so that time uh, we will discuss the whatever the standard uh, fury applications are also there okay so but before that let's look at all our fpm ui applications okay so now this fpm ui applications are built based on basically abap webdin pro in the back end it uses abap webdin pro Okay, so based on this ABAP Webdin Pro, SAP actually built FPM kind of templates. Okay, now all your MDG applications are developed using this FPM applications only, this FPM template. So uh, we actually no need to learn about ABAP Webdin Pro because if you know how to develop or how to enhance your FPM application, that is more than enough for us. There might be very uh, uh, corner cases or a specific requirements. Sometimes we might need to do some changes at Web App Webdin Pro. That is very less percentage, one to two percent. Uh, Ninety-five to ninety-eight percent. Uh, we mostly working on this uh, FPM applications only, extending the FPM applications. Okay. So now let's look at uh, how this FPM UI applications look like. Uh, okay. So <clears throat> to access these UI applications. You need to go to this NWBC.
So usually when you enter NWBC, uh, it automatically takes you to that uh, the next page, but a single sign on is not enabled here. So it is asking me to enter these credentials. Otherwise in your project systems, when you enter NWBC, it will take you to this page directly. Okay, so these are whatever you can see here, these links, right? These are nothing but the roles, SAP PFCG roles. It shows all the list of roles. Okay, but you can actually navigate to this NWBC so that all the roles that you see in the down, those will be shown as a tabs over here. Okay, so now here, this material governance, this is a home page. This home page is also kind of uh, design. We can do, there is a transaction code called LPD underscore cust. I'll show you uh, when we are talking about the roles topic. But using LPD cost, usually we, we design these home pages. That is your NWBC, those concepts, nothing specific to MDG. Okay. Your MDG, we, as part of that one, as in MDG also, SAP build using that LPD cost, they design these kind of home pages. Okay. Now, here you have the links to each and every uh, application. I wanted to search uh, uh, material. So you can actually. When you click on this link, it will navigate you to one FPM application. That application we call it as a search application. Okay, so this is a search application. Okay, now first let's look at uh, our material master UI. When I when I click here from here new, it will take me to a create FPM application. Material create FPM application. Okay. This is a standalone application. Let me collapse all. Okay, so this is a standard uh, uh, FPM application, which is designed basically for material creation or change or display. Okay, you can see here at the top of this uh, this one, right? This we call it as a status bar, where you can see your uh, the material number or uh, in case of business partner the partner number. Uh, along with the partner description. So likewise, you will see some heading over here. Now, after that, there are certain buttons are there over here. Okay, so these buttons, let's say these buttons are uh, either you can expand all when you click on expand all. It will expand all these uh, uh, sections. It will take time when you do an expand all. Uh, uh, there is a reason why it is taking time. We will discuss in the performance uh, uh, thing. Okay. So now it expands every each and every section. Okay. So again, collapse all. It will collapse all. Okay. And uh, now here you can expand only the required part that you wanted to see. Similarly, there is a check button, refresh button. These things are there. Okay, and on the right hand side, these blocks. Now the page is spread across. Uh, you can see here, right? Uh, from top to bottom, there are multiple uh, sections are there. Now I wanted to navigate a particular one. You can also directly go to, let's say, for example, plant storage. Click on this. It will directly take you to this particular section. Okay, so then uh, likewise, you can see the blocks over here. Now this is the setting where you can uh, look at the change layout layout in the sense if you look at if you take this one. Currently this layout is like uh, all the pages are spread across. Uh, I mean uh, in a, is a kind of linear one. So you can actually can make it as a stackable. Uh, put it over here. There is this. You can actually uh, play around with this one uh, on the UI side, uh, but better uh, not to touch anything here. Okay, so let me close. I'm not 
going to do anything over here. Okay. So then if at all you wanted to print this particular entire page, you can you have this option print. Now in that down, you see some buttons, actionable buttons, where you can perform save, you can perform submit, you can also cancel this request. Okay. So these are the some of the important uh, buttons you can see. Now, if you look at how this UI application is organized, okay. So this organization is like you have your main page. Under this page, this particular page got split into multiple blocks. Okay. So this each block we call it as a UIBB, User Interface Building Block. Building Block. User Interface Building Block. So this is one UIBB, this is one UIBB, and this is one UIBB. Okay, so there are multiple UIBBs are there. So the collection of UIBBs are placed under one main page. Okay, so this main page we call it as a OVP overview overview page OVP. Why we are calling it as a OVP? Because if you look at this, the entire material master data gives, I can see the complete overview over here for a material master in a single page. Okay, so the data is showing in a single page in a overview kind of thing. Okay, so that's why we usually call this as a SAP overview page. So this is overview page. OVP is a one kind of FPM template, FPM template. We'll see what is this template and everything, but this is one one kind of UI application. Now these OVP applications are the latest applications that SAP is building all MDG related master data using this OVP applications. Okay, and this one OVP application always represents one master data. That means it this OVP application always represents your uh, uh, material creation one material creation dollar 671 is the one material creation it always represents one single material that's why we call this as a sop single object processing it always represents one object okay is this clear till now uh, Akshay, can you please uh, explain SOP part again? So SOP means single object processing. That means using this particular OVP application, I can represent one master. I'm, I, I'm, I cannot show you two materials using one of here. It always, whatever the data that you can see here, all these different parts of data, right? This is for this one single material only. So you can create one material, you can display one material, you can change one material using this page why i'm highlighting this sop because there are certain other applications are there where you can where it represents multiple uh, objects as well in one page okay. but this ovp pages are already always designed to represent one single master okay Okay, thank you. So, any questions from anyone? So, I just gave very high level how your UI look like, but we will discuss about all these UI babies and everything. Okay, so we are uh, discussing this OVP applications, right? So, usually these OVP applications are uh, kind of uh, where you will have that uh, information block wise, and each block we call it as a UI BB. And this collection of uh, uh, blocks we will place on this particular OVP application. Okay, so this always 
we call these applications are sop applications single object processing that means uh, one object you can represent using uh, uh, this kind of uh, ovp applications okay so now these are the some of the examples how you are uh, uh, ui uh, mdg uis look like everyone every actually uh, this block we call it as a uibb this is one uibb this is another uibb so this is another uibb so likewise there are different type of uibbs are there we, we will discuss this uh, uh, today so let's go to the ui modeling topic okay <clears throat> so if you look at uh, these are the out of box predefined uh, ui uh, uh, templates are available uh, in uh, mdg okay so out of this i showed you this how this ovp application look like overview page floor plan okay so it provides an information or overview of one business object that is a, like a one uh, master data which will it will show you that uh, all the attributes of master data uh, uh, via these uh, different uh, uibbs okay these same ovp applications are used across for your mm for your bp and your, even your finance even that article master or eam objects even for our custom objects also let's say we created zm for custom objects also we can create these kind of similar uh, ui applications ovp applications to create or to display to change one master data and these are the latest ui applications so which currently uh, uh, mdg is using whether it is for the standard or custom objects so what we will do is since we created our data model zm data model for the same ZM data model, keeping it as in the backend, we can create one OVP application uh, for our ZM data model where the user can log in and they can enter some data and uh, submit that request. Okay, apart from this, there is other uh, type of UI applications are also there. Another one we call it as a GAF, Guided Activity Floor Plan. So this guided activity floor plan, especially we use for MOP scenarios. That is multi-object processing. Okay. So this is a SOP, single object processing. Single object processing. So it represents one master using this GAF framework we can actually perform bulk updates mass updates for any master data so these are the generic ones these gif applications are very generic ovp application i showed you one ovp application that is specific to especially designed for material master similarly you will have the similar kind of ovp application for customer vendor likewise okay let me show you one ovp application for um, Okay, so let me open again. Okay, so if I go to customer governance. Such customer. So First time when you are loading, it will take some time. Okay, so if you try to create a new customer.
Okay, so again, uh, you have a similar kind of uh, OVP application over here. Here, uh, it has a since it's a customer creation, so you'll have the bank data, payment cards, I, I, identification number, tax data. So then, uh, all these uh, uh, different information. Okay, this is also developed. This DP application also developed using that OVP uh, template only. Okay, but now when it comes to the other one guided activity framework it it actually it's a generic one we don't develop uh, this kind of guided activity framework object specific these are generic one okay so i'll show you how it look like okay if you go to material governance usually we use this for the file upload download okay so let me go to file download Download means it will download the data into your uh, the local system from the uh, database and then you can correct the data and you can again upload it. So now this is an example for your uh, uh, guided activity frame of uh, uh, framework GAF. So guided activity the name it called it as a guided activity. You can see it's a step by step in step one. You will be performing something and once you complete this one you will when you click on next it will take you to the step two. And in the step two, you will do some more activity and next. So it guides that uh, uh, the step by step over here. OK, the reason I said it is a generic one. This is not specifically developed for material master. You see in the top, you have something called change model. So when I go to here. Here you can change your data model. Okay, you can also find your our ZM data model also. When you select your data model, it will show you all the entities under that particular data model. Then you go to next step and you decide your selection criteria. Then you decide what attributes you wanted to download from what entities. Then finally, you can review your uh, settings and you can decide whether you wanted to download in a tab delimited or uh, uh, comma delimited or something and finally when you execute the data will be downloaded based on the selection criteria similarly you can correct that data and you can use you can upload this so this we will discuss this file upload download process uh, during our mass capabilities but just for your visualization purpose i'm just showing you how your guided activity framework look like so gf we don't actually develop anything it's a generic one even if I go to go customer governance also, the same GAF uh, framework will be shown with the default uh, data model as BP because it's a customer. So you can see here the data model will be defaulted with the BP. So you'll find all the BP related uh, uh, entities over here. OK, so this is an example of your guided activity framework. OK, so the other uh, types are there, though I just mentioned over here, those are uh, uh, obsolete or kind of uh, uh, deprecated. OK, quick activity and OAF. So quick activity floor plan or object instant floor plans are the older uh, legacy uh, UI applications. Now these both got replaced with your OVP. This is just for your information purpose only. I just kept it over here. But we are not using at all this. Uh, we stopped using this uh, from MDG 7 onwards. Okay, so these are the only OVP applications that we are going to uh, use. Okay, so now after this, here we have given an example how your OVP layout look like. Okay, so at the top you have a, a kind of a actionable buttons. Okay, so now. Uh, there is something called tabs are also available. Let me show you here the tab that in the screenshot that is showing. If you go to over here. This particular UI we got uh, has uh, tab tabular information. You can see here two tabs are there. Okay, so you can switch between these tabs. So these we call it as a, the, the normal uh, tabular ones. So that is what it's showing. It's a tabbed UI BBs. Okay, then you also have this personalization setting. And uh, you can see this, this UI BB is in an expandable mode. And uh, this is in collapse mode. 
so that is what actually whatever i showed you earlier it is showing over here now when it goes to gif guided activity framework we can see the road map of this we call it as a road map this 1 2 3 4 5 we call it as a road map Okay, so this is example how your guided activity uh, framework look like. Okay, now after this, there is something called uh, okay. So there is something called fluid. Fluid means basically to design your OVP application. Usually, uh, if at all you, you wanted to write some ABAP program, you go to SC38 or SC37 or uh, SC24 and you write the respective objects, right? So there is an editor where you can actually write these things. Similar where you design your UI application, SAP GUI applications. So similarly, to design your OVP applications or to extend your OVP application, basically to open this one in a, edit editor in a uh, editable mode where you can actually do some changes or you can configure this is in a runtime mode now how do you actually if at all i wanted to add some custom attributes over here or i wanted to add a new ui bb over here so then how do you uh, actually do that you need to open this ui application in a editor that editor we call it as a fluid editor flexible user interface designer Okay, so this is the fluid editor. Okay, this is uh, the view how your fluid editor look like in a designer mode. The same material UI that I showed, now it is in a uh, ed uh, fluid designer, uh, this uh, editor. So we'll see anyway, we need to create our one new UI application. That time we will get into this uh, editor and uh, uh, you can actually design your UI application. You no need to install any external, uh, any compo any tools. Uh, it's a web-based uh, uh, designer tool. Okay. So, yeah. After this, any questions till now? Akshay, like any, maybe you will be discussing further or uh, yes, we yes. have created one data model ZM, right? I mean, how can we see that in this UI? Yes. If no questions, now, next thing is we need to actually create one OVP application for our ZM data model. Okay. okay? okay. So okay. once you know how to create a new FPM OVP application for your data model, then it is very easy to enhance the MM or BP or any standard uh, uh, UI applications. So as part of this particular topic, we will be learning two things. One is how to create a brand new UI application, FPM application, because the guided activity anyway, we don't need to create, it will be already available. Uh, the existing guided activity we can use for our custom data model. So we never enhance uh, this guided activity or the, the mass UIs. The only thing that we enhance is always the standard SOP OVP applications, whether it is a uh, material or BP or anything or even so, or we, sometimes when you're going with a custom data model, you will create a new UI application. So if you know how to create new, there we will be covering all the concepts of uh, your OVP so that uh, when you extend this application or uh, when you, if at all you wanted to enhance this, uh, the existing standard applications, it will be very easy for you to follow. Okay, so now as I said earlier, how your OVP application look like? You have multiple UI BBs. These are the different UI BBs on your OVP application. UI BB1, UI BB2, UI BB3. Okay. Now, these UI BB, UI BB is a generic term. So, these UI BBs are actually categorized into multiple UI, different type of UI BBs. One, we call it as a form UIBB. 
another one we call it as a list uibb then we can we also have something called a tabbed uibb then uh, we have composite uibb composite uibb then there is something called a freestyle digital uibb you also have something called a reusable uibb so likewise uh, many things are there of course always we only use the, these two things but these are uh, i'm just uh, uh, showing how those uibbs look like but 100% will be working on only this type of uibbs only form and list uibbs okay now let's look at how a form uibb look like okay so on this ui application this is the example of form uibb your basic data your basic data is one uibb okay so this basic data uibb we can see this is a form uibb it represents one set of data for your material master it 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 will allow you to maintain one set of information one material type one industry sector one material group it actually the the attributes are placed in a rows and column fashion so that it represents in one uh, one set of information because it's a generic data basic data will be always uh, uh, one set of data for your material so form uibb always represents one set of data whereas you have the other one list uibb list uibb always represents multiple uh, rows or multiple tabular format that means if you take the plant data right let me go to uh, dimensions not dimension so i think a plant is a best example yeah plant one right so i wanted to represent uh, uh, this material is extended to or this material is going to extend to multiple plants so then how do i represent i this tabular format so i can go ahead and add a plant over here such a plant okay so let's select one plant like multiple entries is a list okay, so again i can add one more plant so wherever you wanted to represent more than one record we always go with this uh, list uibb okay so likewise you can extend this material to multiple plants this is example of list uibb okay so then we also have something called tabbed uibb tabbed uibb means uh, this one you i showed you this right under the change request you have something called uh, three tabs this this we call it as a tabbed uibb where multiple tabs are placed on this uibb okay this is the example of tabbed uibb composite uibb is nothing but it's a combination of form and list that means in one uibb itself you will have two child uh, uibbs it can be two forms or two list or one form one list or something like that okay so let me show you the example of uh, composite uibb i believe dimensions okay now see here this is one form the top one is it's a form uibb the down one is list uibb and again on the right hand side this is again another form uibb that means in case of composite uibb you can add multiple uibbs under it okay so this is example of uh, composite uibb freestyle uibb i never created i never uh, see an example or requirement how we need to, what is the need of this one but the thing is that free freestyle uibb means if you are uh, 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 if you know webdin pro and if you think that any of these existing uibbs or these things are not uh, suitable for your requirement i wanted to show in an hierarchical manner or tree structure or something like that right in that case uh, maybe uh, you can go with a freestyle uibb freestyle uibb means in webdin pro you need to design your own this kind of uibbs and uh, start using that one that i never see any requirement of where uh, we go ahead with a freestyle uibb but conceptual wise sap provided that because for all this form list tab composite uibbs in the back end it's a webdin pro one so sap 
thinks that okay these are the generic uh, templates that is required that's why they already created this kind of templates but if something is whatever is available that is not suit for your requirement you wanted to create on your own you can go ahead and create a freestyle uibb okay so then this reusable uibb is there so reusable uibb is something like uh, uh, you, you create one uibb and that you wanted to use in multiple places so you don't need to develop that uh, for every ui application you can just simply add that over here so that is a, that we call it as a reusable uibb example is this change request so this change request uibb what are the tab uibb you have so we don't actually even when i'm going to create a new ui application for our zm data model i create all this form and everything we will create all these uibbs but this change request uibb we don't create it this is already something already available in the standard the same uibb will be used across your bp material and all those things whenever i wanted to create a material or a customer or business partner this particular I, I need this change request number and all that right for as part of your mdg concept this change request will come into picture so sap has provided a separate uibb where it will store all your cr related information along with your material data so now this you don't need to design for every uh, uh, ui application this is already developed what we do is via configuration we will bring this into your own ui application that's it but which is this is already available so this kind of uh, uibbs we call it as a reuse this is one of the example but in general if you see any such kind of uh, uh, reusable uibbs you can prepare it and start uh, using in your uh, uh, multiple places okay so this particular slide gives that uh, the generic uibbs are nothing but your form uibb list uibb composite and all those things reusable uibbs are you have your notes attachment sections or your cr cr uibbs freestyle uibbs are where you can create your own custom webdin pro component and uh, publish this as a uh, the freestyle uibb so out of this we are only interested on these two uibbs form and list okay so now with this knowledge for our uh, custom data model zm data model where uh, okay so one more thing usually what happens is every uibb when you are when you are creating your own ui application for your data model where it can be a standard or custom data model what happens is this every uibb represents one entity data at the data model level if you, you have multiple type one type four right so this one uibb always represents one entity information this represents another entity information this represents another entity information okay so now we need to create an ui application uh, uh, which will actually the ui application should be something like this so this is my let's say for example this is my ui application so at the top i will have something called a cr uibb because which is mandatory when you are creating any master data by using mdg you need to have this one and i will create one uibb for my type 1 i will create one uibb for my type 4 because we have type 1 and type 4 only right we will create only for type 1 and type 4 type 3s are the ones which will already added part of your type 4s only so always we will create a one uibb for type 1 and one uibb for type 4 this is my ovp application that uh, we are going to create now okay now can someone tell me what kind of uibb i need to take it here list uibb it is a single entity right based on the previous uh, thing right and form uibb form and what uibb i need to have it over generic here? uibb so list as well as from both okay here we will take a form uibb because our type 1 information is one set of data right when i'm creating a material i will have one set of basic data my material type material group and everything 
there is no point in taking a list UIBB over there. When you are taking list UIBB, only if at all you wanted to represent multiple sets. And for plant, I wanted to extend this material to multiple plants, right? So I, I should be able to have a, a, a capability or flexibility to maintain multiple plants. So because you are type 4 also, it's a, the relation if you look at 1 is to n relation between your type 1 and type 4, the relation is 1 is to n. For one material basic type 1 data, you will have n number of records. So that's where we will create a list UIBB here. So one form UIBB and one list UIBB. And this represents my SU type 1, this represents my SU type 4. So is this clear why I'm selecting a form UIBB for type 1 and a list UIBB for type 4? Yes. And because it will hold single entries, like we can go with form. Okay. I hope that silence uh, is in that you guys are clear. Okay. Fine. So I'll stop here for today because there are some questions or doubts uh, uh, you guys are having. So tomorrow what we will do is we will create one OVP application and we will add these uh, form UIBBs and list UIBBs and we do all the required configuration. We are not going to write single line of code. Everything will be achieving via configuration only. So just we need to follow step one, two, three, four, five. That's it. Then your, your application will be ready. We are not writing anything because the rest, everything will be taken care by MDG framework. The way how we uh, designed our data model, we created entities, relationships, and everything. And finally, when you activate your uh, the structures, tables, everything got generated. Here also, you will do some configuration, and uh, then automatically your UI application is ready. That tomorrow we will see how to create a uh, application, OVP application, and we will see a demo how the data gets inserted into your uh, tables and everything. Okay. Fine, if no questions, yeah, I think uh, we can uh, take that uh, the previous day. If anyone having any issues or any questions, queries, we can discuss now. So someone mentioned that they have some issue with the data model, right? Some error. Yes, I, yes, actually, yes. Can yes, tell yes, me what uh, is the data model? ZDA. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes. I am able to hear you. ZDI is the data model. So, yep. Uh, uh, so, I, I didn't hear that. Any questions on this UI, the overview, the concepts that we discussed till now? Okay. So, if no questions, uh, uh, I'll stop for today here and uh, we can continue our UI modeling topic uh, tomorrow. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you for attending the session. I hope you all enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Also feel free to ask your questions in the comment section below and we will reply to them at the earliest.